Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The Missing Corpse of Henry VIII's Lord Chancellor One of the most influential people of Henry VIII's court was Cardinal Thomas Wolsey. But Wolsey was an incredibly lucky man. He was accused of treason in his final days, and the former chief advisor to the king was almost certain to have been executed. He was a man who greatly frustrated the notorious Tudor monarch at times, but he would also, throughout the decades, almost act as a king would. In England, Wolsey would be involved with the running of the country, but he would take on the boring parts of being a king that Henry VIII did not want to do, and he was free to do a great deal. He even began to build Hampton Court Palace, which was his palace to begin with, but the king would later make this his favourite court residence. But Wolsey had many enemies, and he retained the king's confidence until Henry VIII wished to annul his marriage to Catherine of Aragon, so that he could marry Anne Boleyn. But this would be Wolsey's downfall. But today, there is a great deal of mystery still around the missing remains and burial of one of the Tudor period's most influential figures. Cardinal Wolsey would fail to secure the annulment for the king, and this led to his arrest. It was rumoured that Anne Boleyn convinced Henry VIII that Wolsey was making the process fail, and with this, it was believed that Wolsey was influencing the Pope's refusal. In 1539, Wolsey was stripped of his government office and property, including Hampton Court, and he was allowed to remain as the Archbishop of York. He travelled to Yorkshire for the first time, but whilst there, he was accused of high treason and was ordered back to London. He knew that he would probably face the axeman and executioner, but this would have been an execution that would have caused chaos across Europe if it would have gone ahead. Wolsey was in great distress and upset, and he went towards London with his personal priest, Edmund Bonner. He began the long journey, and he spent a night at Hardwick, and also spent a night in Nottingham on his way down, it was a long journey, and during it, it was reported that Wolsey waxed so sick that he was divers times likely to have fallen from his mule. But he was clearly ill, and on the 26th of November 1530, he arrived at Leicester Abbey. He was greeted by the abbot who lit his procession, but Wolsey knew he was dying. He would declare that, Father Abbot, I am come hither to leave my bones amongst you. Leicester Abbey was known as the Abbey of the Meadows and was found one kilometre outside of the medieval city of Leicester. It was a highly influential abbey and it occupied a large amount of land. There were around 24 canons at the time of Wolsey's visit and these were priests who worked in the local area. The abbot was rather lapsed and he was known for being a poor financial manager of the land and abbey but the entire abbey was surrounded by thick wool. The main church was next to the bank of the River Saw, and it was an incredible place. It was said that they brought Wolsey on his mule to the stairs foot of his chamber, and there he alighted, and Master Kingston then took him by the arm and led him up the stairs. He was housed on a first-floor chamber, and it's possible that the abbot gave his own rooms to Wolsey. He may have also been housed in the guest lodging across a small courtyard, south of the cloister. When he got in his room, Wolsey went straight to bed and he grew sicker and sicker, and after a few days it was known that Wolsey was dying and that his life was coming to an end. Cavendish, a man who accompanied Wolsey, would stand by his bedside with the wax tapers burning in darkness, and Wolsey was drifting in and out of consciousness. He didn't know the time and was delirious. He would say, That cannot be, it cannot be eight of the clock, for by eight of the clock ye shall lose your master, for my time draws near that I must depart out of this world. At this time, investigations were occurring at Wolsey's household, and there was evidence found that he had embezzled and stolen around £1,000, which was a huge amount of money, and that this had been hidden. Wolsey was questioned about this, and Henry VIII was furious, but he would not say where it was. But the constable of the tower, who had been told to fetch Wolsey, feared that the cardinal would not live past tomorrow in the morning. 
Kingston demanded to know where the money was, and the Cardinal listed named of those he had borrowed it from. In his final moments, he remained under questioning, and through that night he waxed very sick, and often swooned, and he asked for some food. It was warned that, My lord will not live, and that Wolsey was in great danger. Wolsey would make a speech before he died, saying he had a fever and flux for eight days, and that he knew death would come. He said he had served the king faithfully, and recalled the many times he had attended on King Henry VIII. He warned against the spread of Lutherian ideas, but his body was shut him down, as his sight failed him. He was given his Catholic last rites, and as the clock struck eight in the morning, Wolsey was dead. It was said he may have been suffering from dysentery and issues with his stomach, but this death saved Wolsey the executioner's axe. After his death, a messenger was sent to the king to tell of his passing, and the mayor of Leicester was summoned to witness the corpse. Wolsey's body was taken from its bed, and a hair shirt was found underneath. There were no records of his entrails being removed, or of it being embalmed, which was usual for high-status people. Wolsey was laid in a coffin of boards, wearing all of his vestures and ornaments as he had been processed in, in which he was consecrated bishop and archbishop. He was then buried with his mite, crozier, ring and pool, and he lay in the coffin for a number of hours, and many people flocked to see his body. But he was then moved into the Lady Chapel, in the north of the chancel of the Abbey's church. Wax tapers were lit and burned throughout the night. Mass was said, and then the Cardinal's body was committed to the ground. However, today, the remains of Wolsey have been allegedly lost to time. It is clear from accounts that Cardinal Wolsey was buried inside of the Lady Chapel of Leicester Abbey, and there have been a number of attempts to locate Wolsey's tomb and remains. Extensive digs have also been carried out, but still today, no one has managed to find his body. It would be a remarkable discovery if found, one of the most powerful Tudor figures dressed in all of his religious regalia. Richard III was found within the city of Leicester, and there have been many calls to try and find the final resting place of Thomas Wolsey. While standing inside of the Lady Chapel, and the remains of it, you can see the memorial stone to Wolsey, which does not mark his site of burial. This only mentions that Wolsey is buried somewhere near. The Lady Chapel is not too big, it sits next to the altar, and would have been a small and pious room where priests would come to say their prayers. But where is Wolsey? He is somewhere within the small lady chapel, but despite the digs that have happened, he is yet to be found. This means a few possibilities. He may have been moved at some point during the chaos of the following years. The abbey was dissolved during the reign of King Henry VIII, and much of the buildings were demolished, and much of the stone was then used to build a new mansion on the site. Was it possible that the body of Wolsey was removed during the dissolution of the monasteries, as it would have been certainly known by Henry VIII that Wolsey was buried there? It is possible, and it's possible that Henry would have ordered his unceremonious dumping of his body, or moving of his remains to a different and more low-key place, he may have even ordered his enemy's remains to be dumped inside the river Saw that was next to the abbey as a mark of disgrace to Wolsey, the man who could not get the king what he wanted. This would be in keeping with Henry VIII's brutal side, but the king could have also moved Wolsey to a different location, quietly ordering his burial in a more high-profile and better place than Leicester Abbey following the dissolution. After the abbey was demolished, it would have been cleared in the months after, where Wolsey was, but this was not recorded. There is also a distinct possibility that the remains of Cardinal Wolsey still lie inside of the chapel, or that they were interred within a wall of the chapel, but this would have shown up when the demolition took place. He may have also been buried inside of the other parts of the abbey, and Cavendish, who wrote the final moments of his life, may have been mistaken. This would mean that still today archaeologists are looking in the completely wrong part of the abbey, and could also have been moved to a local church nearby, as the dissolution of the abbey was occurring, or that inside of a local Tudor house he was buried nearby. What is shocking, though, is that there are unlikely to be any living DNA descendants of Wolsey, and finding one would be very tricky, 
should his remains ever be found. With burials of such high-profile people of the Tudor period, they were usually interred close to the high altar. The Lady Chapel is nearby, however Wolsey could have also been buried next to the altar. But Cardinal Wolsey was the influential Chief Advisor and Lord Chancellor to Henry VIII, who would have, through death, escaped the Executioner's Axe. He would have been taken to the Tower of London and interrogated, before probably as being detained and then executed on Tower Hill by Axe. He, in a sense, had a very lucky escape. However, today his remains are still missing. If he were to be found, it's likely he would be found with his riches and religious relics, and it would be a captivating find that would unveil the remains of the second most powerful man in Henry VIII's England. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.